to take this moment to make sure I do it from there and it's going to be amazing. So my next guest, you might know who he is already, he is a winemaker, he is an author, Like that when they get out 
around Kennedy, at least they have a job. And so that's what we aim for. You all better clap for that. So that was pretty special. 
2007 was special because I became the first European you know, to win the MVP, so that was pretty special too. And then uh, 2014, if I had to choose one, I would choose 2014 because it, it, it was tough, you know, like we won three in five years and you think you're going to win it every year. And then for seven years, it was just like hard you know, to get back on top. Yeah, and yeah. We lost the conference finals, couple conference finals, lost uh, in the NBA finals in 2013. That was a tough one to solve. But uh, I love the way we came back in 2014 and the way we played. And, uh, the way that we shared the ball and uh, they called it after you know, the beautiful game. Uh, that was definitely uh, my favorite championship because at the time I was 32 and, and you appreciate more, you know, how hard it is. To, to win a championship. And, uh, just to kind of describe, you know, you came in and you won a title in your second year. Manu came in and won a title in the second year. Duncan won a title in the second year. Like, you guys must have thought, like, yeah, this is going to be easy. Oh, for sure, you get used to it. You know, it's like a, it's like a drug. You know, you're, you're winning, and especially with our fans, you know, every year it was crazy. Every time championships so you want to do it again, you want to do it again. But when I look back, I will change nothing. You know, it been three and five years and then for seven years, you know, it was a rhyme, you know, to, to get back to top. But at the end of the day, I, I love the way, the way that uh, it's only, what, I think 30 or 40 players in the history of the NBA that have four championships. It's very hard to win four championships. So. That Detroit series, though, was definitely the one that gave me a ton of anxiety. And I, I don't know how you guys go because as fans, it was lopsided games, every single game. And then we had game six, which we thought we were going to win. We did. I was at that game. And because of it, I had to go to game seven. And that game seven, I had never felt that much level of anxiety for the entire basketball game. Hey, you're not a kid, man. Um, I mean, do you recall like the feeling and the pressure and all that through that series? To be honest with you, uh, that's the best part of the year. You know, that pressure. You know, I love that pressure, and there's the way that you handle that pressure that makes you successful or not. So, 2005, it was the ultimate. Like I said, it felt like a Super Bowl. You know, you just have one game and winner takes it all. So. Uh, it was a pretty good feeling uh, at the end of the buzzer and, and you and you win a championship in that fashion and it was pretty cool. Is there any advice uh, Tony now would give yourself when you were first drafted? Anything you would have told yourself? I always tell the kids at my academy to dream big. Dream big. When you tell your dream to somebody and he's not laughing at you, you don't dream big enough. So I'm going to repeat it. Because you look at me like crazy, like you don't understand, you know? I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. Dream big, and if you say you're dreaming to somebody, and it's not laughing at you, you're not dreaming big enough. And so that's what I did when I was a young kid. I was dreaming big, and everybody was laughing at me. Back then, growing up in France, I was, I was telling people I would become the first European point guard to make an NBA. Everybody looked at me like crazy. They were laughing at me, oh, you're too small, you're too skinny, uh, you will never make it. And now I'm the one who's laughing at me. Yes, you are! Yes, you are! Don't forget that. Uh, fan question here. Who was the hardest player to guard in your career? Uh, the hardest player to guard, uh, well, I, I played in the great era for point guards. You know, a lot of people say my era was like the golden era of point guards. You know, between you know Chris Paul and Stephen Curry, or Westbrook, there were so many great point guards. You know, Stephon Marbury, Steve Nash, Jason Kidd, uh, Gary Payton. Uh, it was a lot of great point guards. That's what made it fun for me. Yeah. You know, in life, it was a great challenge. So it's hard to choose one. Out of, out of all of them. I'm just happy that I played in a great era of point guards. Special for Carter, if you could be any superhero, who would it be? Uh, well, I always like Iron Man. You know, Iron Man was the first one. Tony Stark! In 2008, when they started, you know, the, the movies and the MCU and everything, uh, 
it was just uh, the way that uh, Kevin Feige thinks about everything and thought about everything and putting, you know, at, at every end of the movie what's going to happen next. Uh, I think it was just a uh, great thinking, great mastermind behind all of this. And uh, congrats to them for all the success. But uh, if I had to choose one, I'll go with Iron Man. There you go. Uh, Daniel from Sagi would like to know which matchup did you enjoy the most in the finals? Lakers, Heat, or who else? My favorite all time was the Lakers, for sure. That was my favorite all time because it, the, the fans in San Antonio just, every time we play the Lakers, the energy in the arena would be unbelievable. Like, and I, and I, love, I love those couples who will come with a Tony Parker jersey and a Kobe Bryant jersey. It's like, it's like big battles because uh, we have a lot of Laker fans in San Antonio. And so that's why I will always love playing against the Lakers. And when I got drafted, all my pre draft meetings with the Spurs, all we talked about, they were like, how can you help us beating uh, the Lakers? You know, and then they were like obsessed with beating the Lakers. And so I will always remember playing at the Dome my, my rookie year, 38,000 people, and you play against the Lakers, against Kobe and Shaq, and it was just a great, great time, you know, great era to play. And, uh, and the Lakers, they were so good because they were going on their three feet. And I will always remember the second round we played the Lakers, and I had a great series against the Lakers. And that was the, f the first time that Timmy talked to me, you know, after that series. So that was, that's how I always remember that I uh, love playing against them. For anybody who doesn't know, Tim Nugent didn't, uh, didn't, I don't want to say respect is the no, word. No, he didn't talk to me my whole first year. He ignored Tony his whole rookie season. He didn't think a French point guard can beat us you know, to a championship. But now they're best friends. So persistence yields resistance. I think maybe it was my accent. Maybe he didn't like my accent. <laughs> and all your cool statues. <laughs> He's a big comic fan too. Yeah, he loves it, yeah, for sure. Uh, Julian would like to know how did you feel winning your first ring? My first ring, uh, that's the best, one of the best feeling. But at the same time, I didn't really realize, you know, I was 21 and everything goes so fast. You know, you're winning a championship, you think it's going to happen every year, you know. And so, uh, but it, it was just great that first year, especially with sharing that with my family and coming from France, you know, it, it was so new for us, you know, because it was very rare that Europeans, you know, win championships and I became the first French guy to win a championship. So the, the, first, the first one was nice. I have a question, a little bit of a throwback for you. Will we ever see you again as one of the top 100 most beautiful people in the world? <laughs> that was funny. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how that happened. You know. I think the ladies knew how that happened, right? <laughs> that was a good experience. That was a good experience. Came, 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 out, came out of nowhere. And I like to remind my friends because they always say, oh, it's because of Eva, you know, that I got that. But actually, that, that 100, top 100, became before I dated Eva. So uh, I like to remind uh, remind our friends when we like to talk trash, you know? <laughs> and I love that uh, your teammates, they started giving you a little bit of a hard time. They started putting like makeup in your locker, right? Is that yeah, right? they were making fun of me. They were just haters, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, let's see here. I'm still waiting on that Tony Parker rap album. I'm retired, man. I'm retired. I'm retired from basketball and from music, you know? Now, I had a great time doing it. Like, uh, at the time, it was a great way for me to, to release pressure and, and do uh, other stuff. Uh, great experience, you know, to be with Jamie Foxx and Fabulous and all the, the great uh, theater that I did. Uh, I was able to learn a lot of stuff. And, um, but at the end of the day, even if I had a great time doing it, it was tough to, to keep going, you know, with basketball and in the summer I played with the national team. So I had to make a choice between the national team and music because they wanted me to go on tour and stuff like that. So I chose to, to play for my national team, but uh, I, I'll always remember those days and I had a great time. We had a great time listening to you, Ralph. I was there at the uh, championship celebration when you did your flow for the first time. I did that? Oh, yeah, you did. <laughs> It was very cool. I have a game for you. A game? A game. Okay. Not a game. Uh, I have some rapid fire questions involving uh, your two buddies. Anybody know Tim Duncan or Manu Ginoli? We're not going to tell anybody how you answer these, but I would like you to choose either Tim or Manu on these questions. 
Uh, which one of them would respond first if you sent them a text at the same time? Who's the fastest to answer? Mine. <laughs> Who's I don't want to look your love until you respond and just say silent. <laughs> <laughs> Who's more likely to invite you out, to like a dinner or a movie? Uh, actually, both of them. We will always go to lunch or dinners. Uh, Manu will play more tennis or pedal tennis. That's what we do the most. Uh, we always play at my house. And Timmy always comes to my poker games. So, play a lot of poker with Timmy. Timmy is a card player, just like me. Because he's got that poker face on the whole time. Exactly. exactly, he's got a great poker face. Who's more likely to help you out as a favor, like move heavy furniture or something? I'll, I'll, I'll say Manu because he won't answer first. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the better cook? The better cook? Ooh, I don't know. I don't know, to be honest. I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea. We need to ask them to like, make you something. Yeah, that's a good question. I should ask them. I don't know. Who's the better dresser? I really have to answer that. <laughs> I, I, I know, wanted that. I know, I know, I know by far. I wanted that response. I said, my know, Timmy doesn't care though, so... He did wear a jacket for his jersey retirement though, so we'll give, him, we'll give him props to that. I did ask him to wear a nice jacket for my Hall of Fame, because obviously Timmy and Manu is going to present me, so... I said, can you be a, a, at least be decent, please, Timmy? <laughs> My one favor, please. Last one. Let's say you're back on the team. You did something Coach Pop didn't like. You know he's angry. Who's more likely to take the heat from you? Uh, but Timmy, Timmy, because me and Manu, we always get screamed at. So <laughs> Timmy was like good because we had me and Manu to get screamed at, so he was good. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Somebody wants to know, have you ever worked with uh, international players or players from uh, China? Do you have any advice or training tips for young Chinese players that you'd like to share? Um, for, for me, the advice that we talked about it is about dream and dream big because it starts with the, the mental side. Uh, I think it's very important to, to write down stuff, you know, what you visualize and what you want to do. Half of the job is you writing it down and believe in yourself. Uh, I always thought when I was playing, when I started, when I was a kid, that maybe you have players that will be stronger than me, maybe you have players that will be faster than me, maybe you have players that will jump high at me, but if it's one thing they're not going to beat me is the mental side, because that's the, at the end of the day, that's the difference between the good players and the great players. When you have the light coming on and you have 20,000 people cheering for you, uh, that's when you see the difference between the guys who's going to be ready for me is the mental side. So I will definitely, if I had to give an advice, uh, yes, you have to work on your skills and stuff like that, but the difference is going to be in the mental. Absolutely. This, this is a tough question for anybody, but I'm going to ask it anyways. Do you have a favorite movie of all time? Or if you can't pick one, maybe, favorite movie? maybe like just two or three of your top five. Favorite movie? Uh, I don't know. It, it depends. Like, like uh, if it's what uh, superhero or comedy or action movie. But uh, some of the movies that I like growing up, uh, it was Man, Man, Man of Honor for motivation with Robert, uh, with uh, Robert De Niro and Cuba Gooding Jr. Uh, it's called Man of Honor. I always like that movie for, for motivation. Um, great movie. Great story. Um, if I had to choose one superhero movie, I would go with end, the end, the last one, The Avengers, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 game, the part two. Uh, that, was, that was a great, great movie, great way to, to finish and to end everything. I will always remember the 2012, the first Avenger, you know, when you had it for the first time all together. That was pretty cool too. Uh, comedy, I go with uh, Wedding Crashers. <laughs> comedy. I was thought that movie was very funny. I love it. Uh, let's see, somebody, I didn't get a name here, they want to thank you for winning four titles in the city. And they said, please tell us about any practical jokes your teammates played on you or each other. And what did Manu do? But uh, 
the most famous jokes everybody knows is the big three. It was putting a bottle, you know, when we sit down, you know. Uh, yeah, the cups. Yeah, yeah, the cups, bottle, cups, whatever. We put something to mess with Timmy. Uh, me and Mano, we always like to do that. Um, that'd be the, the, yeah, the most common one that we'll do. Did he fall for it the most? Did Timmy? He? Oh, my car, yeah. <laughs> and he never tried to get you guys back? It's a hard time. It, it, yes, it's hard for him to once he goes down to go back up and run. So, if anybody doesn't know, because it, it took me a while to find this out, the San Antonio Spurs YouTube channel has been putting out this uh, documentary series like every few weeks or once a week. And the last one that came out like a week ago was all about how the team had this great camaraderie, and they also included several of the pranks you would play on each other. And they are sometimes really elaborate and really bad. So go watch uh, Rings of Rattle and the last one that came out uh, about the pranks and all the fun that they had. What are some of your fondest memories, not on the court, but not even at practice, between games, traveling? But just you, just you talked about you know, uh, the, how we got along. You know, uh, and how we love playing with each other, and uh, and I love the way like every dinner was always good, was always uh, uh, like everybody in the team, you know, they were very curious. You know, we always had great conversation. You know, with Manu or Boris Diaw, like like everybody, like it was always great, great dinners. Uh, I always love my wine dinners. You know, with Coach Pop, um, it was very different. You know, it was just a team where everybody got along and uh, and. You see it, you know, then on the court, you know, the chemistry that we have. It's um, it's something you don't think about, right? Uh, basketball is such a an easy sport to comprehend, but to really build that trust and that almost like intuitive. Nice it's important. It's very important. It's a mix between, like you say, trust between each other, between the players, but with the coaches and the front office, they were always very patient. You know, uh, if we didn't win it, you know, every year, you know, they were patient, you know, to keep going, you know, uh, with the same team. Sometimes in professional sports, they want to change everything after a year or two, and it's hard to build something special if you want to change everything after two years. And you can see it this year with the Denver Nuggets, you know, they were very patient with their players, and, and you see it on the court with that great chemistry. And, uh, and I saw that uh, Kyle Lowry uh, uh, said that, uh, you know, Joe Kitch and Murray reminded him of, uh, of me and Timmy. And, and it's the same kind of way the way they built their team is very similar to the way we did it. And uh, I can see the similarities, you know, with their team and our team. Absolutely. Uh, first off, happy birthday, Joshua Martinez. Where you at, Josh? Hey, hey. Here. Happy birthday, Josh. That's the name of my son, Josh. Josh has a question. Uh, his question for you is, with uh, Victor, Wendy, how long do you think that our Spurs should make it to the playoffs or win our next championship? <laughs> Good question, Josh. That's a tough question, Josh. Tough question. Uh, but I've been knowing Victor for a long time. You know, he played for my, for my French team in France. We won a championship together in France. His little brother is going to my academy right now. His big sister went to the academy, so I was very happy for him and his family because I knew that they, they really wanted to come to San Antonio. They really wanted to be a spur, so that was great, you know, obviously for for us. Uh, then for the playoffs, uh, it is going to take some time. You know, I know the expectations are, are, are super high, and uh, I, I, I just, just want to make sure that people are, are patient, you know, uh, with him because when Timmy came. He had David Robinson and Sean Elliott and Avery, they were already a good team. So it's going to be a little bit different uh, with, uh, with Victor. It's going to take some time and our team needs to be uh, better too. We need to add some, some pieces. Uh, but I hope that it's not going to take too long. You know, I hope in a couple of years, three, four years, we'll be able to, to contend you know, for, for a championship. I love it. I love it. You good with that, Josh? You're young, man, so you gotta walk, I mean, you, you got time to wait, okay? Be patient. Uh, Heather Henry Bromples wants to know, well, first off, she says, they named their daughter after you. And would you ever consider Parker? Parker? 
Okay. In you go. Not in you go. Is, is Parker here? Oh, go. Hi, Parker. <laughs> How old is she? Just turned five? Five, man. There you go. You and Josh, you can wait for the championship. <laughs> so, uh, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> uh, would you ever consider coaching? Uh, I always say no to that question, but you should never say never, you know what I mean? So I will, I will stay, uh, I'll stay open to it. Uh, my two brothers, they're coaching, you know, and my little brother is the assistant coach in Austin, and my other brother is coaching uh, in Asbel, the team that I own. He won a championship with Victor. So um, you never know, you never know. Right now, uh, not right now, but you never know in the future. So I have one last question, and uh, we appreciate um, everything that you do, not just um, you know visiting us, but signing all these autographs, taking time out of your very busy day. We know how busy you are. So my last question is this: How does it feel knowing that you are not only going to the NBA Hall of Fame, but you're also going with your longtime coach and mentor, Coach Bob, and also your former assistant coach, Becky Ann? It's almost surreal, you know. Uh... First of all, to go to the Hall of Fame is surreal. I never thought about that. Even if I dream very big, like I told you earlier, I never thought about going to the Hall of Fame. So my career was even better than everything that I dreamed of. And, and so to go in there is very nice because right now I'm writing my speech right now. And so I'm being very nostalgic and going through everything. And it's been pretty cool to go through all the memories and everything we accomplished uh, as a team and to go with Coach Pop and with my big sister, because we're very close, uh, me and Becky, to with my big sister is just uh, unbelievable. And so it's going to be very special next month, you know, to, to be there and listen to Coach Pop, listen to Becky, and then D-Wade, we play against him, you know, in the finals, and, uh, and Powell, I play against him every summer with the national team. Dirk, I went to his jersey retirement, pretty good friend with Dirk, so it's very special uh, Hall of Fame for me. It's going to be pretty nice, and uh, I can't wait to, to experience that and, uh, and make it uh, official and come to the and come to the Spurs Arena and see my jersey with the HOS. It'll be pretty cool. Thank you. 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 Thank you.